I love, I love, I love bowling right now. I'm fucking into bowling. I bought the shoes. I'm fucking going to the bowling alley during the middle of the day. I'm fucking getting high scores. I'm fucking watching instructional YouTube videos. I'm watching documentaries about bowling. I'm listening to bowling podcasts. I'm following bowlers on fucking Twitter. I'm fucking jerking off the bowling porn. I'm fucking dressing up as a bowling ball and choking myself. I'm fucking going down to homeless guys making them look like bowling balls and then throwing them into another group of homeless guys that look like pins. I'm fucking naming boats the ball hole. (laughs) I'm into bowling. You're listening to Hypothetically with Will Newton. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time it is where you are, thank you for listening to Hypothetically with Will Noonan. That's me. I'm coming at you right now from Harvard Street, Boston, Massachusetts, Brighton, Austin. I don't fucking know one of those. And uh, I'm back, motherfuckers. It's been a super long time. I don't know, a month uh, since the podcast last episode of Hypothetically. And... Um, that's because I got a new YouTube show called The Noonan Show. It's out now. We've been working on it, but more on that later. The point is, hypothetically, it's back. It's not over. The Will Noonan Alone in the Car podcast talking about his life is still here. I am still here. Uh, where have I been? This is often the opening topic on an episode of Hypothetically. Where have I been? Sometimes... I just put out episodes like once a month, even though I still pay, you know, all the money it takes to put out this podcast and now another podcast. Sometimes I only do it once a month because I'm so fucking busy now being a stand up comic and uh, having a a great girlfriend for God's sakes, a great girl and uh, life is good. So I haven't had a ton of time to do this podcast and I'm also gonna just be straight up with you guys it became a bit of a chore to do hypothetically because not because it's a chore to do a podcast doing a podcast is actually a lot of fun but it had become a little bit not fun for me and I think mostly because I was just coming on here and I would complain about the state of comedy or the state of stand-up or how political correctness is killing comedy and I would just come on here here every show and basically bitch and moan about something for an hour I sort of just got into this groove of doing that and that just made me not want to do it that's I think that's what really happened I just became like man why am I just getting on there and bitching somewhere I lost the the thread here this used to be a podcast about how great it is to be a comedian and how like you know climbing that ladder from MC you know up to headliner and you know I just started to kind of catch myself towards the end of 2018 especially not even just on this show uh the last time I was on ready set blow but one of the last times I was on the kumia show um and there was another one I've just Bobby Kelly's podcast. I just went on a few podcasts there. It seemed like a string. And I'm not 100% blaming myself. It was just kind of the topic du jour. And still is. All the time is... Is comedy too fucking... Um, you know, getting its balls removed. Are black and white people ever going to get along? It's just like... There's something every day that you can be outraged about. And... I just kind of had this, I just had enough of it, really. So I decided to, sort of subliminally decided to cut back, I guess, and I just wasn't doing the podcast as much. It felt like the topic came up on every single show that I went on. And then me and Paul started doing this other show, The Noonan Show, which is, a, which is visual. Uh, it's a lot like this, but it's different. Uh, so I'll get into that too, but, but the point is doing that show with Paul and doing, we did like a six practice episodes and we got back in the groove of doing that and doing that kind of made me think about podcasting and how it can be fun. And I had some fun doing it again. And, uh, right now I'm, I'm excited to be doing this episode of 
hypothetically, and, I, and I'll, I'll be excited to finish it and upload it and get back in the groove of being a good podcaster, but I don't know. It just got a little bit... It was time for a break, I guess, but where do I start? I don't know. First thing I want to say is I was listening to myself on the Ready, Set, Blow podcast. I think the first time I was on that podcast, it was one of the best interview podcast appearances I'd ever had. I was like in a great positive mindset and I was saying good things and I was speaking the truth. And I think the last time I was on, it was like the exact opposite. I was in a bad mood. I was having a rough day. I had just lost like a gig that I wanted to get. And I was feeling negative and down about like the business and stuff like that. And I got a little stoned and I started to kind of like talk without really thinking. And that's something <laughs> I think I've done my whole time doing this podcast. I just kind of say whatever I want. But, you know, no one ever heard a lot of that shit. But now people are hearing it. And now when I say something stupid, people hear it and they call me out on it. So I've kind of, I was talking to Kumi about this when he was on uh, AAF, when he was up here doing the Maddie and Nick show. I was like, how do I was like, I don't know how I'm, it's, it's hard to be so on the edge that you're always like thinking of the next line and being funny and being like quick, you know, you want to be quick, but in the whole process of being quick every now and then you just step in shit or you just say something incorrect or you kind of don't even say, you say something you're not even really willing to defend, you know, that, and that's my problem. Like I've done it on, on this podcast a bunch of times and I actually was speaking to a reporter recently about Louis C.K. And and I was sort of reluctant, but she seemed like pretty cool. And like, I don't know, I figured she'd be a good person to talk to. And she was, but she kind of mentioned a few things I had said on this podcast, like about about Louis C.K. And and it's like, damn, it feels weird to have someone quote you back to you when you were just kind of like talking out of your ass. Let's let's face it, you know. A lot of the stuff I say on here, I absolutely believe, but also a lot of it I could easily be convinced otherwise if someone just a little bit smarter could explain things to me. I mean, that's what it, that's kind of the big debate, right? Is comedy how seriously should comedy be taken? And my answer is like really not that seriously. How how seriously should a poem be taken or or a short story? It's or a song. It's um, it can mean something to you, but you don't have to let it ruin your day either. But, uh, so I listened to myself on Ready, Set, Blow, and I was like, man, I'm kind of saying some things on here I don't even agree with. I heard myself say that, you know, I I even heard myself shit on young comics, which I never, like, would have thought I ever would have said. And I also never would, don't really think. So I was surprised to hear that word come out of my mouth. Like, man, they just want whoever is young and and uh brown and uh you know has a an interesting sort of sexuality or some that like that's what's hot in comedy or whatever and i was saying that and i was like man why did i say that you know that's not necessarily i mean there's some truth to it but that's always been comedy comedy's always taken like cool young people when they were too early and uh i guess it i don't know i was just not feeling it that day and there was a little string of those. Even when I was on Kumia, like, I was talking, I got kind of excited with the whole fucking with Opie stuff. And I, and I do like stirring the pot over there, and I do like making Ant laugh. Like, that's basically the number one goal is to make him laugh. And if I can do that by making fun of Opie, I'll do it. But it was, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm after we were kind of watching the video and laughing, we're talking about Opie, and I, I was like, hey, you know, like, he won't answer my calls because cause I'm not famous and Joe Rogan won't answer his calls because he's not famous and da 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 And it was like, I'm kind of trying to be funny, but I'm also making a point. That was another one. I was like, why did I fucking say that? Bobby Kelly's podcast, I said a ton of stuff. I was just trying to be funny, but that's that whole podcast. But I, ba- I basically just kind of, that's something I learned at the end. That was like, what I was learning the last sort of couple months of 2018, I was like, you know what? I need to start thinking a little bit more about what I say and who I'm saying it to. I'm not necessarily going to, you know, censor myself 
or I'm still going to keep doing this podcast where I say crazy shit in my own podcast, but but it's just the way it is now, man. You can't just fuck around. People take everything so goddamn seriously. And I'm not even talking about, you know, the political, socio-political stuff. I just mean talking shit and, uh, you know, uh, used to be kind of like you could rib somebody a little bit here and there and things are just a little more intense right now, I'd say. It's, it's an intense time, but so the, the deal with this new show is Paul, if you're, if you've been a listener to this show for a long time, uh, you know about Paul cause I talk about him a lot cause we've been good friends for years. We've been good friends for many years and Paul's like an audio engineer and he knows a lot about recording and audio recording. He's worked with a bunch of bands, a little, uh, cool trivia about Paul is that he was the original audio engineer on the original 1877 Cars for Kids song. So when you hear that 1877 Cars for Kids, Paul was there present for the first recording and was the guy who hit that record button on the first time. So that's his claim to fame. And he's a good friend of mine and uh but also a talented engineer and producer. So he was like saying to me you know, he's he listens to this show. He's always been not only like a good friend of mine, but like a really good supporter of mine as well. And giving me a lot of good ideas and a guy I run my ideas by all the time. And uh, he was like, you know, man, like I'm doing this Twitch thing and it's going good. He's like, I bet we could do something cool. He goes, I know you're busy. This is like this is what he said that like really sold me on. And he was like, I know you're super busy, but it'd be fun. We could do it. He's like. I'll get everything set up. You just have to come over. I'll be like Jamie. You be. I'll be young Jamie. You be Joe Rogan. It'll be fun. And I was like, that was like the sentence where I was like, let's do it. We're going to do it. So also just fun to work with Paul and do something with Paul. Uh, so Paul like went above and beyond and set up some cameras. I gave him my YouTube like logins and we got started on this whole thing. And, you know, we've, I've learned from experience and from doing this, uh, show and other shows that you should slow roll these kind of things and kind of get them out there uh make sure you know what you're doing a little bit before you start shoving it down people's throats and getting them to come listen so we did a bunch of practice ones a bunch of uh always live but you know technical difficulties here technical difficulties there but now we're actually you know putting them out as real shows we're gonna have some guests but point is paul's Paul's done an amazing job, like creating a really high quality show. The audio is amazing, the video is amazing. It's up there on YouTube right now. Uh, a bunch of episodes. The Will, the Noonan Show. It was gonna be the Will Noonan Show, but then we cut it down to the Noonan Show, which I think has a nice ring to it. But it's different from this. Uh, it's a little bit like this, but we're trying to. We're, we have some segments. We got. One segment is called Hypotheticals, which is where we talk about hypotheticals and whether you do it or not. We're going to be doing a little bit of news, a little bit of science, uh, having some very cool, very big guests. I've saved all my favors for a show like this. Um, Will Noonan will be another sketch, uh, another uh, segment where people decide whether or not I would do something. And then if I will, I will do it some debate and, and other stuff too. We also do a scratch ticket segment where we buy a scratch ticket every episode and we scratch it and if we win more than $500,000 we start smashing stuff. <laughs> but it's a really cool, awesome uh, show so far and it's just growing. It's also gonna. It's also a podcast. Right now it's available as a podcast on Spotify and uh, a few other places but very shortly it'll be available on uh, iTunes and Google Play and all that shit, Android. But, uh, yeah, I guess we're going for kind of a mix between the Joe Rogan experience and just a morning radio, you know, type show like Opie and Anthony once was when they were on in the morning and uh, in Sam and Jim or, or even the Bobby Bones show, something like that, just... But here's the thing. We do have a mission statement uh, with the Noonan show, and uh, it's to avoid the hole that I got in that I was just talking about earlier. But um, it's also just to kind of set ourselves apart from the other shows that are, are in abundance. And that is our show will never, ever 
we have a mission statement. We will never ever talk about politics in any form. So that means uh, no Trump talk, no election talk, no race talk, no sexual politics talk. Uh, all that shit is for other shows. Um, obviously, we will be talking about human life, so those topics may be mentioned from time to time, and we may dip our very edge of the fingernail of our pinky toe into those waters, but we will not be discussing politics, political correctness, gender, any of that shit we will not be talking to. That's rule number one. Rule number two is we will not be discussing social justice and how social justice is annoying and um, who sucks and, and the, the latest versions of social justice kind of ruining society we, I, I, in comedy. We agree. We, we're, I, we all have thoughts. I've talked about it ad nauseum. The only reason uh, we have this kind of mission statement is not to shit on or throw shade on any other shows like uh, that talk about that, but it's just that it's done. Like, Kumia has great points. Legion of Skanks has great points. Fucking even Ricky Gervais, who I don't like on Twitter, has great points. It's just something I do sometimes like to really get in, like roll up my sleeves and talk about on these shows, but I'd rather our show, the Noonan show, this new thing, be a positive kind of escape from that, or at least a place where you'll get something else, you know? Because even Rogan's show a lot is dominated by, man, things are crazy, times are crazy, people are crazy, and all that stuff's good, and all that stuff's fun to talk about, and Lord knows, I've talked about it a shitload, but that's our, kind of our rule here for the, the Noonan show, is that we're going to just try and stay away from that stuff. Because it's just a little bit fucking boring, you know? And not, not, you know what? To say that is even fucked up. It's not boring, but like during our test shows that me and Paul did, we found that like we did one show where we got kind of heavy into that sort of thing. And it was like the only time out of all our test shows where we, we really just stalled and kind of hit the wall of boring and the wall of sort of just uninterestingness and I think that's that was just a sign you know it's something we've all talked about a lot for the past couple years it's something me and Paul as friends have talked about but like I was saying at the beginning of the podcast it was just getting a little boring to talk about on here and that's probably why I stopped talking about it on here and we don't want to talk about it on there so that is our mission statement Thanks for all the love, the people who have been watching. We are down in the low, low, low numbers right now, of course. A uh, brand new show. But that is kind of where my focus is right now. And uh, so that's the stuff. And we'd love you to go check it out. It's on YouTube.com slash Will Noonan. Uh, you type in the Noonan show and you can get it. And uh, we'll be having some very big guests coming up soon. So excited about that. Another big announcement is that uh, if you will be, well, I know a lot of people go down to Florida for uh, spring training. The details will be coming out soon, but I will be in Fort Myers, Florida this spring for spring training. I will be doing shows for 17 nights in a row in Fort Myers. Uh, there's, or maybe 16 nights, 15 nights, but a, a gang of fucking nights, yeah. A gang of fucking nights. Be at JetBlue Park during the day watching games. I'll be fucking on stage at night. And if you're a Florida person and you've never seen me, I know we got a lot of listeners in Florida, it's a good time to take a little drive to Flor Fort Myers and come hang and say what's up. If you're a Boston person going down there, come see me. We're going to have some celebrity guests, some ball players. It's going to be cool as fuck. The details will be coming soon on that, but we will be at a hotel in Fort Myers doing those shows. Hopefully your hotel. That would be cool if it's yours. But I'm going to be down there living that Florida life from February 22nd to March 10th. So check uh, check me out down there. It's going to be a whole motherfucking thing, and I am psyched. I cannot wait. I'd get on the plane right fucking now if I could. I am counting the days. Every morning I wake up, I'm like, that's going to be so fun. It's going to be 
going on long runs in the morning in that fucking Florida air in the sunshine, getting a little bit of a fucking Irish tanno down there, watching the old baseball, smelling the leather, cracking a bat, watching those fucking uh, Red Sox, champion Red Sox, getting themselves into the groove for next season. So I'm super psyched about that. Uh, that's coming up. So, uh, so yeah. So, big news is we got the new show, and I'm gonna be in Fort Myers. Uh, so that's kind of been the focus. Excuse me, I got a little bit of a cold, so I'm sorry for the snorts. But you know, a lot of people want to know about this girlfriend situation because uh, it is it is kind of a surprise to a lot of people. <laughs> But I'm, you know, I, I don't really want to talk about it too much, uh, just because it's, it's private, you know. I like to keep my private life private. In the past, on this podcast, had a the girl I was dating on here talked about it a lot. It was just bad, because then when we did break up, total fucking strangers were like, "I liked her." I'm like, just because she was interesting for 60 minutes on a podcast doesn't mean you really liked her. You didn't really know what she was like. And it kind of annoys you to have other people's opinions on something like that. So I was like, maybe not do that again. But also, uh, why wrap her up in all this nonsense? It's it's nice to have it not be. But uh, it's been, if you need to know how it affects my life, it's been really good. So that's probably another reason why I haven't been doing a ton of episodes. But really just been a busy motherfucker. I was probably doing a show every, almost five nights a week, every single week. All of November, all of December, most of January. Just a couple nights off here, a couple nights off there. And uh, doing tons of stand-up. A lot of good times, some bad times, some fucking... Some people out there be heckling these days, man. Uh, And not like heckling me, like... Not even like really personal heckles, like towards me, the comic Will Noonan on stage. It's more like... These weird heckles, like, um, all right, for example, Elizabeth Warren. I know a lot of people hate Elizabeth Warren. Even Democrats uh, don't like Elizabeth Warren. Not a very political person. I don't really like politicians in general. Other than, you know, sometimes people locally, I feel like they really have... They have. I, I actually do kind of like mayors a lot of the time. Uh, like I, like I think a mayor is that's a politician right there. That's a guy. He's like, All right, I'm gonna focus on this one city. I can, I can manage one city. You know, the mayor of Boston. I complain about him a lot, but I still like mayors. In city council, state reps, neighborhood reps. You know, stuff like that. Those type of people. I feel like. There's some sleaze in there, and there's some politicians and some handshake shit in there. But for the most part, they do actually have a little bit of, like, they want they want their constituents to fucking succeed and thrive, you know? But I think when you start getting into the, the more glamorous type of politics, like the D.C., pol- Washington, D.C. P- politicians, the Senate, the... House of Reps, even though I think I just said the House of Reps, and the presidency and all that cabinet-type shit, scumbags, man. Governors, scumbags. So, that's kind of how I feel about that. So, I never really liked Elizabeth Warren that much, but I got to admit, you know, I'm a pretty left-leaning libtard, so, you know, and she's she's here in Mass. She's one of our Massachusetts, so she... uh, you know, she cares about my health insurance and stuff, so I got to root for her. But I get, I totally get why people don't like her. I mean, she's not likable. Uh, she's just kind of got that school marm. She reminds everyone of, like, a substitute teacher who was, like, you thought was going to be maybe, maybe we'll get a sub who, like, lets us watch a movie. No, this is a sub who actually cares and wants to teach. Oh, great. Oh, fucking great. That's kind of who Elizabeth Warren is. I try not to vote, though, based on people's faces and their voices and things like that. I try and vote on what they're going to do uh, when they're elected, right? She put out this video that her and her husband, she was like, do you want a beer? Saw that. 
But lately I've been uh, I don't even I don't have I don't have any political jokes, but I do have this joke. Uh, I have a joke about women who uh, it's not even a joke, but it's like a a reference inside a joke sometimes where I'll say women often talk about being part Native American. And another time I mentioned Native Americans is when I talk about smoking a joint that had that that was so big and had so much smoke coming off of it that Native American guys seven miles away could uh, see it and shit. <laughs> not not the best comedy I've ever written. It's old stuff, but you know, right? That's why. So I was uh, doing this. Lately, I've been doing this joke, you know, every time, like, I would say, like, one in five times I do this joke, I get a, one of those lines, I get a, I get a yell from the crowd, I'm like, Elizabeth Warren, Elizabeth, tell Elizabeth that joke, fucking Elizabeth, so, I'm like, what the fuck, they're old bits, too, so I can tell you that I've told those bits a million times, and that hasn't happened. It happened once, way, way, way back when I was in kind of a red state, but it doesn't really happen uh, too often, but it's been happening a lot lately as she's been in the news, so that's been kind of telling where people are on her, so I I think if she runs, she's going to fucking lose, because this is New England, and people are yelling that shit here, yeah, she's not, she's not a person people love. So that's been kind of happening. That's just people now, though. I feel like people are just more emboldened. The world is like a, a world of alphas now. You know, everyone wants to get theirs and not get stepped on. It's very interesting. I think it's social media, you know, it's kind of turned us all around. This guy is doing something very weird. I feel like every time I park this car and just hang in it, someone does some some real weird shit. I guess that's the thing. I guess when you park your car and just hang out in it, you're inviting some strangeness into your life. Um, all right, so what are what's my big hobby right now? If you follow me on social media, you already know. I love, I love, I love bowling right now. I'm fucking into bowling. I bought the shoes. I'm fucking going to the bowling alley during the middle of the day. I'm fucking getting high scores. I'm fucking watching instructional YouTube videos. I'm watching documentaries about bowling. I'm listening to bowling podcasts. I'm following bowlers on fucking Twitter. I'm fucking jerking off the bowling porn. I'm fucking dressing up as a bowling ball and choking myself. I'm fucking going down to homeless guys making them look like bowling balls and then throwing them into another group of homeless guys that look like pins. I'm fucking naming boats the ball hole. (laughs) I'm into bowling. I'm into fucking bowling. I don't know where this one came from, guys. Uh, Definitely came from the early stages of dating my chick. We went bowling a lot. It's a common date practice. I think it's because... You kind of get to, you're kind of hanging out, but you're you're not, there's not, you don't have to make a ton of conversation because you're always passing to go bowl. So if you actually, it can be one of those things where if you want to talk, you can, but if you don't want to talk, you don't have to. It's a very, it's a great date for the young guns out there. Uh, and it's pretty affordable too. Uh, you know, it can get up there with the shoe rentals and stuff, but it's definitely a good time. So I was playing with, we were bowling, and I was playing with her bowling, and I was kind of like better than I used to be. I don't know why. Maybe it's the running. I don't know. But I was getting good scores, and I was like, huh, this is kind of fun. Then I started watching a couple YouTube videos of bowling, how to get better. Because I was like, I think I'd like one of these 300s. I think I'd like one of these perfect games. Because I got something like a 220. or I, I broke 200, and I was like, this felt great, you know. Then I started watching some videos, and I guess to wrap it all up into all of this, why was I so cranky on on all these podcasts? Why was I, I was, personal life-wise, things were good, you know? And uh, if I'm going to be completely honest, I don't know if anyone else would say this about me. I truly don't know if anyone else would say 
that I got like a slightly bigger head at the end of 2018 because I like to keep my head not big. I meditate. I don't think I'm better than... I mean, as a comedian, I can kind of have a big head because I really do think, and I don't give a fuck if this sounds arrogant, but I really do think I'm one of the best comedians. I'm definitely one of the best comedians in Boston. And I think I'm one of the best comedians in the country. I just think people don't know that. (laughs) And that might be arrogance, but I just don't fucking care because... It's not like I sit at home and never do sets and I say this. I get up every night and people tell me to my face all the time that that I'm their favorite comedian or it was a great time. Now, I know people just say that and I know hacks kill, but I don't think I'm a fucking hack. And I think people, uh, you know, people enjoy my shit. I think I'm a good fucking comedian, you know. I don't give a fuck if that sounds arrogant. I do think I'm one of the best comedians in America. I really, truly do. Pound for pound, minute, you know, 45 minutes, I think, you know, you take out all the famous dudes who are just high level, like, you know, uh, like Chris Rock and Jerry Seinfeld and Gaffigan and, and stuff like that. You put me against a lot of these national headliners, I think I'm as good, if not better, than a shitload of them. A shitload of them. Now, I'll say that, but I don't think that that matters. I don't think that affects how I treat people or anything like that. But I heard myself on some of these podcasts, and I'll say it. I was like, who the fuck do you think you are, man, talking about the state of comedy like this? You know? And it's just a guy for an hour that day kind of talking shit. But I think, I will say, I won this... 2018 award I did not take it as like some sort of like it meant anything I really don't I I don't think it put me above anybody but I did take it as this is some validation here at least like I've been trying to tell everyone that I'm a good fucking comic and here it is some validation but I think that mixed with falling in love for like a solid two or three weeks there I had that little bit of I think I know everything right now. I think, you know what? I think I know everything right now. And the problem with my life is when I'm in one of those zones, I can go on a podcast that will exist forever and just say some stupid shit and it'll just be out there, you know? So that's why I've kind of just decided to just not even talk about these things that I just kind of have a general dislike for, like social justice and politics and and stuff like that because it just ends up coming out like bitching and moaning and being bitter when really I should be spending that time you know either creating cool art or at least like consuming cool art and that's been my sort of unofficial uh, my unofficial New Year's resolution has been to not waste so much of my brain power on just junk like reddit twitter articles about comedy articles about the state of comedy articles about louis ck and people recording him and stuff i just kind of decided like if i'm just i'm i'm the one reading this i'm the one bitching and moaning about it i don't need this in my life so i actually banned myself on my own cell phone from i put a block on reddit and 4chan um, so I can't even look at those sites. I can't even look at porn either, which it just kind of comes with the thing because you block adult websites. And I was just like, oh, that's a little. So I have to like do this whole like it's like a four minute process to unlock everything so I can watch porn once in a while, which I guess is kind of good. But I never really had a problem with porn. But anyway, point being, <laughs> I'm spending that time, and, I, and that's not saying I'm. My real resolution is to write an hour every day, which I've been pretty good about, but not perfect about. Um, But I have been perfect and good about not reading Reddit, not reading 4chan. Yeah, I still wake up and have a cup of coffee and read some sports stuff. But then I go and uh, if I'm going to be watching, trying to kill some time, I'd rather watch a great movie or a great comedy special or listen to a great song or something else. Anything better than looking at another fucking meme 
looking at another blog about how the world is going to fucking shit, reading some stupid science article that I'll never fucking see whatever I'm reading about, you know, male birth control pill or something. Like, I sort of just go, I admire all these people out there who I see are, like, living more fulfilling, less connected lives. And it's right, the ability to do that is right here. And I'm not doing it. So I think that's sort of my point, I guess, is that we're in this weird, we're in this weird thing right now where it's like, we've kind of been given the keys to the candy shop. Like we can just eat all the candy we want and no one's going to tell us it's too much candy. It's now on us ourselves to self-discipline ourselves for how much candy can we eat. And I think even when even even the Apple iOS now has this screen time function where they're telling you how much you're looking at your screen. I'm like, this is not good for their company because they're basically letting you know, wow, you're looking at your phone a lot. Maybe you want to look at it less. I'm like, why would Apple want you to be using your phone less? And I think that's because Apple's done enough research to be like, hey, if all these people fucking go crazy and commit suicide, we won't have any customers left. So maybe not get them so addicted on their phones. Because basically, for the past 30, 40 years, no, less, 20, 15, 20 years, we've sort of been guinea pigs of all this technology, social media, even the podcast you're listening to right now, and the recorder I'm holding right now, this is all shit that no one was doing 15, 20 years ago, and we're doing it now. I think you should be listening to this podcast. I think I should still be listening to the podcast I listen to. But, you know, should I be looking at Reddit? Should I be on Instagram all fucking day long getting jealous of people? No. I don't think so. And I think everyone kind of just like food and alcohol and drugs or whatever, everyone kind of has to find what works for them. But I'm seeing now a sort of pullback uh, where people maybe aren't so proud to of the fact that they're on their iPhone all the time. They're not really so proud. They're kind of starting to feel the the pinch a little bit of like, man, you know, Snapchat and um, Instagram aren't really making me feel good, you know? My girlfriend and her roommates are in their mid-20s. And uh, they all had a re resolution at the beginning of 2019 to get rid of Instagram and to like, get rid of Snapchat and to look at that stuff less. And I was like, that is, that to me is interesting data. Like three women in their mid twenties want to take a step back from this shit. That's a, that's gotta be an indicator, uh, of everybody just being a little bit burnt out on it. So I've been trying to just kind of focus on the way, same way I'm diligent about my health and, I quit smoking. That took a lot of diligence. I'm trying to be very diligent about what I put in my mind now, like with this internet stuff, because I can get very caught up in Reddit and not even the content that is on Reddit, but the comments underneath these faceless names. I think that's really the most dangerous thing because you just use your mind to fill in whoever that person is that's talking, and you kind of just go, man, they're smarter than me. Whoever they are, I don't know who they are or how old they are, male, female, whatever. I don't know anything about it, but they're smarter than me, you know? And I think that's bad. It's just a weird mental trick. Some people have different defenses. I know people who don't give a fuck about anything. They don't give a fuck what the world thinks about them. They don't give a fuck what's going on in the world. All they see is what's in front of them, and, and, but they got their own problems. I don't think anyone gets out scot-free. You're, if you're not... A fearful person, you might be a really angry person. If you're the most relaxed person on earth, you might, you know, not be a great person to be married to or, or be in a relationship with because you just don't have any passion. You know, uh, there's all kinds of like pros and cons to whoever you are. But I think we're in this weird phase now where it's up to you to really decide who you want to be. I mean, you can go real deep. You can decide you don't want to be a man or a woman anymore. We don't even need to go there. You can get into how awake do I want to be? Do I need more Adderall, less Adderall? How happy or sad do I want to be? Do I need more Zoloft or less Zoloft? Uh, I mean, we're all on something. Everyone I know is on something. 
that's the thing. We're like the most diagnosed generation. Like young, old, every old person has a hip or a knee or a shoulder or arthritis. Middle aged women, they all got the fucking Bell's palsy or fucking uh whatever other palsies <laughs> they can get. Crohn's, IBS, uh, gluten intolerance, anxiety, depression, OCD. It's pretty much, if you, is there anyone who doesn't have something? And if they do, they probably, not having anything probably has a name. It's probably called like evenitis or something. But that's not, a, that's not like, just because... I don't know. I, I try and think of that. I'm like, just because there's a name and a medication for it doesn't mean that it needs to be squashed. This is what makes us us. But I don't know. That's a whole other fucking topic. Now we're getting into, like, that kind of thing. So why – but but to be honest, I guess this all kind of wraps up into why I'm enjoying bowling so much because – or wraps into – because bowling is zero t- – I mean, there actually is some technology. There's the pin setter. There's the computer screen that tells you your score, and there's the ball, you know, coming back automatically to you. So there is some tech there, old tech. But that's what I love about it is, like, I like going to the bowling alley, bowling center. I like just picking up this heavy metal, uh, metal, this heavy rock of a ball and chucking it down this wood lane that's covered in oil and hitting these wood pans, and it makes a sound. It's a very just visceral, uh, natural. It wouldn't seem natural in the 70s, 80s. That's the thing. Bowling was a mocked kind of indoor sort of sport. The way you'd make fun of someone for playing video games and being a video gamer right now, you would actually think of a bowler. They're dirty. They're hairy. They're fat. They just stay indoors. They get no sunlight. That's the old stereotype of a bowler. Only now, through the world becoming so much more indoors and so much more shitty uh, and defunct of, like, athleticism, that now bowling is actually getting, like, the credit because you're like, oh, wow, there's actually people moving when they bowl. They actually throw something. So bowling's become sort of more legit, uh, I think, through the way the world is. But it's a fucking good-ass time, man, I'll tell you. And I'm making, I make friends every time I go to the bowling alley. And uh, I do go alone. And that's been, an, you know, everyone loves to talk about that. Everyone kind of likes to talk to me about that when I'm on radio shows. They always think it's like a super fun sort of topic. Why do you bowl alone, Will? Will, why, why the hell do you bowl alone? It's so weird. I'm like, I don't only bowl alone, first of all. I bowl with my friends. I bowl with my chick. But I like to go during the day, especially it's freezing fucking cold now. A great way to break a little bit of a sweat in the middle of the day. Uh, and it's very lonely at the bowling alley during the day. There's only a few other psychos like me there, and it's it's awesome. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, I don't know. I just really like about it, and people have kind of been making fun of me for But also, people go to the driving range alone. People go to... You know, it's just a lone type of sport, like golf. You know, you can practice when you practice. Bought my own shoes. Haven't bought a ball yet. Really want to buy a ball. Just, they're like a hundred and something dollars. I can afford it, but I'm just holding off on the ball until I really know, like, what I want. I haven't uh, focused on a weight of the ball yet, but I'm enjoying, I'm really, really enjoying, I should say. Sort of, there's some people on Twitter who have been talking to me about, uh, about bowling and uh, their bowlers themselves are ex bowlers and they got some tips and it's just been really cool. So I've been really enjoying that and I'm very much into bowling. So I want to give uh, all my new bowling friends a fucking shout out. Give Jason Bel- uh, Del Monte, Bel- sorry, Belmont, <laughs> Belmonte a fucking shout out. He, he talked to me on Twitter. He's really cool and uh, I'm into it, man. I don't know. Who knows? Bowling could be in my future. Might, might have to enter some tournaments. I don't know what's going to happen. More to come there. Also, Fortnite. I've been playing a lot of Fortnite. I think I talked about that already on this podcast. I've been playing a lot of Fortnite. Uh, finally got a win. I actually have two wins now. I changed my name on there. I was using Will Noonan for a while, but then I just kind of decided, why am I doing this? Like, what? I could have a fun name. So now I have a new name. Uh, I'm not going to say exactly what it is because I don't really 
like to have a ton of friends uh, <laughs> on there because I just I'm pretty much on there just to play with my nephew. But um, it's a it's something along the lines of mobile phone old dude. You just got killed by a dude on a mobile phone. An old dude on a mobile phone. That's like I just want people to know that they got killed by an old dude on a mobile phone, and they should feel bad for that. So that's uh, where Fortnite's been at right now. A couple people. Uh, I tried to submit a Fortnite dance, you know, when they were suing everybody. Um, they did not accept my dance. I did get a couple people, uh, <laughs> a couple people in. I am looking for ideas though for this new show, like for segments. So like some of the stuff we are talking about doing, we're doing the hypotheticals, uh. Which is, if you can come up with a hypothetical, we'll discuss it. But also watch the show and, and you know, see the hypotheticals that, that we discuss. Uh, the scratch ticket one was the first and first one. I, I buy a scratch ticket on my way to the to the studio. And then, uh, you know, we hold it the whole show. And then at the end, we scratch it. And if we win 500000 we start breaking stuff. Uh, so, you know, we want to focus on... We're going to have one segment where we do good news news that is positive in the sense of it doesn't frighten you or make you think everything's going straight to hell uh and i definitely want to do some sports man you know i do love fucking sports i love listening uh, this baseball season i got back into listening to sports radio um i really kind of tapped out on listening to weei because it was pretty shitty for a while when i was not living here in Boston. When I was living in New York, I would come up, visit Boston, pop on EI like before a Sox game, and just be like, this is fucking trash, man. This is just straight trash, homie. Like, too many callers. They were they were putting a lot on the callers for a few years there, just having the callers fucking call in and giving them too much airtime. If you ask me, the worst thing about fucking uh, sports talk radio is the callers. It's always someone with more passion than brains just being like, why don't they like that player? That's my favorite fucking player and they should fucking na 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 you know? It's like, all right, dude, relax, relax. Uh, and But they got some good people on there now. This guy Mutt is my favorite. He's one of my favorites. That guy's super funny. But I also like Alex Reamer, uh, Evan Drellick, Brad Fro. All of them are good. So there's some uh, Rich Keefe. I really Rich Keefe's definitely my favorite guy on the whole station. Uh, the Dale and Keefe show. But anyway, long story short, fucking love listening to a lot of sports talk radio. Even got into a little bar stool this year. I'm doing a gig with Jerry Thornton tomorrow night. I've worked with Francis. They're nice. I don't know Jerry Thornton. Francis was a cool guy, very nice guy. I don't have anything bad to say about bar stool sports, but it's not really for me. I'll just say that. It's a little bit just a little bit bro centric uh for me. There's some funny shit on there. I'm just kinda not into it. The guy seems like a real fucking douchebag, that Portnoy guy. Uh I I admire him. I think he's a fucking business genius. I think he's got a, the confidence that like all men should strive to have. Uh and I think the guy knows how to make money and even lead i don't i don't think he's like a bad person but he would be a tough guy for me to uh to deal with because he just seems like a fucking kind of a loud mouth <laughs> it doesn't really doesn't seem open to uh opinions that differ from his own <laughs> hard guy to convince uh and it seems like everyone's kind of afraid of him and he butters everyone's bread so it's like you can't really fuck with him so like I like Barstool, but I think being involved with them would just be like being in high school and trying to get in with the cool kids at all times. And it's like, who fucking needs that, man? Who needs that in their life? Comedy's a little bit like that. I think people think it's more like that than it is. It's definitely not like that anymore. People are so goddamn nice in comedy now. Like, to the new people and to people who are fucking making mistakes. And I host a show every week at Capo. And we have some new comics sometimes, and they always fucking blow the light and do too much time. And I never fucking give them any shit. People used to scream at me if I did something like that. Make me, like, almost want to cry. You know, scream at me as hard as they could. 
ruin, like not give me another chance for months. You know, like it used to have some real stakes. Now everyone's just very kind. I don't know what's better or what's worse. TBH. <laughs> uh, but we're going to be doing some sports on this show because it's just something I think that is a positive thing in the world. Whether you're not, whether or not you're a fan of the Boston sports teams that I like, uh, you should still like, uh, you should still be a fan of something. So if you're not a fan of the Red Sox or the Patriots or the Celtics or the Bruins, maybe you're a fan of a, of a Premier League soccer team or even a volleyball player. That's kind of the thing I wanted to focus on was not even the mainstream. Like do a weird sport like ESPN2 used to do, like badminton, volleyball, cricket, stuff that you don't normally see coverage of here, and we'll do the weird stories from that. Actually, that's a good idea. I'm going to write that one down. <laughs> so that's that. <clears throat> um, wow, we're kind of getting close to the end here. I haven't done one of these in a while, so i got to say I kind of felt it a little bit. I felt the time a little bit on this one. I do want to uh, shout out a listener, Jen Menjin. She's got a little something going on uh, here in here in South Boston for the Southie people. Uh, oh, and you can support her, I guess, from anywhere, but she's a follower of mine, and she's been very supportive of me here in Boston, always retweeting my shows and helping me out. So I want to give her uh, a boost. She's she's running for the mayor of Southie, which is like a symbolic position. You get to be in the parade and on St. Patrick's Day and uh, do your thing. So I want to give her some love. The link is on our chat on the Noonan Show on um, on uh, YouTube, and I've also tweeted it a couple times. So you can find it, Jen Menjin, and uh, this Thursday. So that would be tomorrow night uh, or the night this comes out. She's at uh, the Playwright on Broadway, 7 to 10. With acoustic covers, Brendan Gavigan. Gavigan! I've uh, been playing a lot of guitar lately. Love, love, love playing guitar. Me and Paul and Pat actually had like a little sing-along the other night. Paul was bazanged. We were all bazanged up, but Paul took a bunch of uh, THC pills. He was fucking... Sky high. And we did some sang. And uh, let me tell you, my guitar is getting pretty good. I don't know what, um, what might have some might have some musical stuff in the works. Sometimes I think about just doing like songs on YouTube, like uh, with a mask on or like covering my face or something and putting them up like under uh, some other name and just seeing if people like it. Just seeing if people like my songs, man. I just don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> uh, got credit for a twenty dollar bill that I put inside a tip jar. Someone, oh, someone, I put in a single. Someone before me had put in a twenty, and I got credit for it. They were like, "Hey, thanks," and I was like, "Oh, no problem, no problem. No, it's just me. I'm a big tipper. What can you say? What can I say?" <laughs> Uh, what else is going on in the news? I don't know. I think I'm going to wrap it up. It's a little early, but it's the first one back for a while, right? Right? Check out the new show. And if you're really hard up for some me talking, there's a bunch of old ones that you probably have not heard. Go over to my YouTube channel. Subscribe, man. Leave us the thumbs up and subscribe. That's how YouTube works. It takes seconds. Even if you barely ever go on YouTube and you don't give a shit about this, do me a favor. Go over to my YouTube page. Like, subscribe. If you really want to be fucking crazy, turn on notifications. But that's where we're at. Leave a comment. This shit adds up. We got a brand new show. Hypothetically, it's always going to be here, but it may have gotten as big as it's ever going to get. But we're going to try and hit the mainstream now with the new show and grow this thing. And my goal is to do it in the mornings and hopefully do a national morning radio show, but that is years away. But with your support, we can do it. You know, with all of us working together, we can do it. And like I said, we're keeping it positive. We ain't going to bum you out, but we're not going to be fucking chicken shit and light either. We're going to have some fun. But it's been great to be back. Great to do hypothetically. Hopefully the next one won't be a month away. And I don't think it will be. I don't think it will be, guys. I can feel it in my heart right now. Times are good. It's 2019. We back, baby. Peace out.
Test, 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 test. Still work? You still work? Are you still work? Motherfucker. Ah, uh, what's up? Cat driver? Don't you know what's happening here? I drink a bad coffee. I feel good. Oh man. This coffee's completely fucked. Why am I drinking it? It's 10 o'clock at night. I'm in a coffee mood. Coffee mood. Got a bad attitude. Got a man on the booze. Got a man on my shoes. Got a man. Here we go, on two. That seems right, it's picking that up. Test, 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 test. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three.